Hello there, I'm Natalia Malu, your unfiltered fit BFF, mom of two turned CEO of a fitness empire. Someone who understands the struggles of trying to stay fit, sane, and sexy, all while juggling work, life, and motherhood. And this is the Unfiltered Fit Life Podcast. Follow along wherever you're listening and join me weekly as I help busy working moms just like you simplify their fitness journey so they can lose weight, regain their confidence, and feel sexy AF. It's time to stop living in the what-ifs and hiding from the cameras. It's time to regain control over your body, feel sexy naked, and wear a bikini confidently. People already see you as a super confident woman, but it's time for you to feel the same way too. Let's go. Hello, hello there, fam. Welcome to another episode of the Unfiltered Fit Life Podcast. I am Natalia Mello, your host. And today, ladies, we are celebrating an incredible milestone. I'm super excited to share with you. We have reached over 7,500 downloads. At the time of this recording, we are at 7,739. When I received the email, it was 700. So we already added over 200 to that number. And I know that for some, it might not be a lot, but I am going to be here celebrating 70 downloads, 700, 7,000, 700,000, 7 million, because it's not just about the milestone, but what it symbolizes the fact that, you know, I have all of you listening to my nonsense and you want to listen to it and you keep on coming back. And I really appreciate that you guys are giving me a little bit of your time and sharing your days with me to listen, my ideas, my expertise. So thank you. This wouldn't be possible without you. So I'm going to be celebrating every single milestone because I am not doing this alone. So thank you all. And if I can do a shameless plug, I would like to ask you to leave that review on your platform of choice. That helps me know that you're enjoying it, apart from you listening. And it lets the platforms know that you are enjoying it. So they keep on showing this podcast to more people. And that's what we want, right? And hopefully we can help as many people as possible is by sharing the episodes that you love with people that you believe will benefit from it. So if you could do those two things for me, I'll be very grateful, and that'll be our way to celebrate. Today's episode, we are going to be talking about how to strategically approach your 2024 fitness goals. And what drove me to record this podcast was a conversation that I had with a new member to the Powerhouse Academy, which is my signature program. And a conversation that I had with her was very similar to conversations that I've had with many women in the past. And I really felt like it was important for me to create an episode around this. And the conversation was, she was telling me how she wanted to change. And whenever I asked her for more clarity on what needed to change, she was like, I want you to feel better. And when I kept on asking for more clarity on what needed to happen in order for her to feel better, she was very reluctant to say that her goal was to lose weight. And then I asked her, I was like, why are you so reluctant to tell me that you want to lose weight? And her response was that whenever she shares with her friends that she wants to lose weight, it's almost the, the, what I call the toxic body positivity message. Oh, you need to be grateful. You need to love yourself. And I'm all about it. I do believe that we have to love ourselves and that we have to be grateful. Big believer of gratitude and loving ourselves. But whenever people ask you to bypass or to forget the impact that not feeling your best is having on you, and just completely erase that by being positive and love yourself. That's the definition of gaslighting. And that's what I call the toxic body positivity. Because how is it helping someone to create meaningful change when their feelings about themselves are are not even being acknowledged? So if your quality of life is being impacted by your weight, you need to stop listening to people that tell you that it doesn't matter. 
that you should be grateful because that is just going to make you feel crazy. Like, honestly, imagine you telling that you're feeling sad and that you're feeling hopeless and, oh, no, just disregard that. Isn't that the very basic definition of gaslighting? So whenever we're talking about mental health, there is a lot of talk about the negative impact of dismissing feelings and and thoughts that you have from a mental health standpoint. But whenever it comes to how you feel about your body and that you know that you could be doing better and that your health is being impacted, oh no, you should just love yourself. How is that okay? So let's start talking about how to be very strategic with your approach this year to your fitness goals, which is really how I walked it through with this lady. And the first step is to be real and specific with where you are, what your goals are. And then once you have clarity with that, because just being vague with, oh, I want to feel better. Okay. What needs to happen in order for you to feel better? Oh, I want to, you know, just feel good. Okay. What needs to happen in order for you to feel good? We need to stop using like fluffy buzzwords and dancing around a problem that chances are that people are very aware that it is existing, but because for some reason it has become not socially acceptable to address the elephant in the room that if you are overweight, you need to lose weight. So let's address the elephant in the room and you stop with the fluffy answers. I want to feel better. I want to feel my best. What needs to happen in order for you to feel your best? Is this to lose weight? If it is to lose weight, how much? Is it to lose fat? How much? Is it to put on muscle? Cool. Do you have like some kind of inspo? Obviously, you're not going to be like somebody else, but whenever we're talking about muscular, oh, I want to look more muscular. I want to look more toned. What is muscular for one person is going to be completely different for another person. So I really think that becoming very laser focused and specific on what your ultimate goal is, is only going to help you. And it's going to help you be more strategic with the tools and plans that you put together to get you to where you want to go. And then once you have clarity on that, you need to have clarity on what works for your life in a way that is not going to lead to burnout. So here are some questions that you should ask yourself after you bring clarity on what the goal is. An objective goal. We don't want fluffy, oh, I want to feel better and all that crap. We want objective. Is it to lose fat? Cool. How much? How much fat do we want to lose? Is it a different sizing clothes that we want to get into? Cool. Let's get specific. Once you get specific with that, we need to get specific with our availability and what is realistic for the life that you have, not the life that you want to have as far as like, oh, I wish I didn't work 10 hours a day. So let me create my workout routine around this imaginary life that I do not have. Because if you create a routine for a life that you wish you had as far as like, oh, I I wish I didn't work 10 hours a day and I just, I had like five hours to spend in the gym, it's not going to work. Oh, let me create a strategy and a routine that works for the life that I had when I was like 20 and had no responsibilities. That's not going to work. So here are some questions that you have to ask yourself. How often can I commit to training, realistically speaking? Because... That is one of the biggest reasons why people burn out is because they go hot when the motivation is up there right out of the gate. Oh, I'm going to train seven days a week, two hours every single day. And then they burn out because it's not realistic for the life that they have. If that's what you want, great. But I wouldn't go there right out of the gate. I would start slow. And then if you want to add more time, cool. But chances are that by being realistic about how often you can actually commit to is going to make it a lot easier for you to stay consistent, which is ultimately what is going to give you results. Another question, how much time can I actually dedicate to training? Because I 
speak to some former competitors who are in a completely different season of life, okay? And then they're like, oh, I'm just going to go back to what I did when I competed. And I'm like, but when you competed, you probably did not have a bunch of kids, a career that was as demanding as yours is right now. You probably didn't have a husband or a partner that also needs your time. So how are you going to go back to the, I don't know, three hour a day workout with the life that you have now? For example, for me, Natalia, where I am in life right now, if you were to put me back in the same routine that I had when I won the Olympia, I would crumble. I wouldn't be able to maintain that because the life that I have now, my demands with my three businesses, my two kids, my husband, somewhat of a social life, it doesn't align. I would crash and burn. I would feel like a failure. I will feel like I sucked. The problem is not me. The problem is the strategy. So be realistic with how much time you can train and dedicate to being in the gym or if you train from home, training at home. And then the other question is, do I enjoy the activity? And listen, you're not always going to do just what you enjoy. I hate Bulgarian split squats. Hate it. But you know what? Still got to do it because they give me a perky booty and nice squats. So... This isn't a talk about just doing what you enjoy, but especially as you're getting back into the groove of things, it is important to at least tolerate the activity that you're picking and be objective with that. I'm going to use myself as an example again. If I were to pick running as my activity to get back into the swing of things with fitness, I wouldn't keep on showing up because your girl hates running. Not my gym. Don't like it. If you tell me, hey, Natalia, the activity of choice that you're going to get back into is going to be spinning. I love spinning. All about it. Even Zumba. Haven't done a Zumba class in a minute, but love dancing. So it might be something that I would be able to commit and stay consistent because there would be that quote unquote instant gratification to showing up. And what happens is After you get in the groove of things and you keep on showing up consistently because there is that quote-unquote instant gratification to do what you enjoy and you start seeing results, you are going to be more likely to compromise on an activity that you might not enjoy as much because you're already seeing results. It's hard to commit to an activity that you don't enjoy when you're not seeing results and you are starting from a place that you likely have never seen yourself before. So... Questions to ask yourself, how much time can you dedicate to training and do you enjoy the activity? I would always recommend starting with some kind of activity that you enjoy or at least sprinkling it into your routine. And that's a big thing that we do in the Powerhouse Academy. We're always going to ask activities that people like to do because I know that there are a lot of coaches out there. They'll be like, oh my God, spinning sucks. You're never going to be able to do spinning ever again while you work with me because it sucks. I disagree. I disagree because my goal as a coach is to make sure that my people are showing up. And if giving them an activity that they like is going to make them consistent to show up, you better believe that it's going to be there. Because fitness is a lot more than, you know, a six pack and fat loss. Although that is the outcome that a lot of people want, but it's not what it's all about. So making sure that the activity is something that the person enjoys is huge. Next one up, are you being realistic about your expectations and the effort that you are willing to put into creating change? And I have a funny story for you. I was talking with a lady a while back. Um, I think this was about seven or eight months ago. And as I was talking with her, I, I would say 20 minutes into the call, she literally said, I am not willing to compromise. And I'm like, excuse me, um, what? (laughs) I'm confused. She's like, I want to do this and I'm not willing to compromise. And I'm like, okay, so you want to do this one thing. And for her, I I can't remember if it was keto or intermittent fasting. And I was like, you are about 30 pounds overweight right now. And you have been trying to do the keto intermittent fasting on your own. And that's what you think that works. But you have been doing it and you haven't gotten results. 
and you're not willing to compromise and do something different or put in a little bit more effort into some kind of planning, but you want results. Yeah, I want to lose the 30 pounds, but I'm not willing to compromise. And at that point, I had to tell her that I didn't think that I could help her because your actions need to match the expectations that you have. And not just for, you know, a few days or a week or for the first three months of the year, because the truth is that with your fitness results that you can maintain are going to come from a constant. They are not going to come by the one thing that you do for 60 days, 12 weeks, whatever it is, and then go back to your old habits. So there is going to be some kind of compromise. And if you're not willing to put some kind of effort, you are definitely going to have to revisit your expectations. And this is not something that is for a coach to do, it's for you to do. And I'm talking about like some basics. There is going to be a level of preparation that is required. There is going to be a level of planning that is required because chances are that you've been flying off the cuff and winging it for a while. And that's probably what got you here. So you would be delusional to expect to get a different result by using the exact same strategy. That's like legit the definition of being batshit crazy. So whenever you reach out to someone or you decide that you want change, there is going to need to be some level of adjustments that will need to happen. And your job as someone who wants change is to do some research and find who it is that is going to be able to get you to your goals by providing you with changes that you can implement into your life that you can see yourself doing in the long term. So any direction that you go, there is going to need to be some kind of change. Because if what you were doing was working, you wouldn't be looking for help to begin with, right? And you'd be like beyond happy with where you are, which that's okay. If that's the case for you, this podcast is not for you. But if you're listening, it's probably because you know that there is room for improvement. And in order for improvement to happen and for your expectations to be met, your willingness to work towards change and your effort are going to have to be reevaluated as well. So if you think that planning your meals is, oh my God, it's too much work, cool. But we need to be objective. And is it too much work to be overweight? Is it too much work to not like how you look in your clothes? Is it too much work to hide from photos? It is really about analyzing and see what is the effort and work that you're willing to live with. And it's not for any coach to decide. This is a decision that you have to have a, a little chit chat with yourself and decide that. So expectations must match your willingness and effort. And that's going to be in the long run. If you want long-term changes, if you want just a crash and burn kind of stuff, then this podcast might not be for you either. So that's the next strategy. And then the last but not least is, is still on the topic of expectation, but now not so much on the expectation of effort and willingness to change, but also your expectation of the outcome. Because, for example, if you have been doing crash and burn strategies. You know, I'm talking about Optivia. I'm talking about, for many people, keto, intermittent fasting. If you're using the more kind of, quote unquote, gimmicky kind of strategies, and you're able to lose a great amount right out of the gate, but then after that, you always end up gaining it back. And then you decide to go with a strategy that is going to be more long-term sustainable. So it stops being a roller coaster 
with your results and it becomes something that is a bit more steady. You are going to have to readjust your expectations with how much change you are going to be able to see right out of the gate. Because the truth of the matter is that what comes fast goes fast. So if you're going into a strategy or a plan that is to be more sustainable and is to be more steady, you cannot expect the same drastic change right out of the gate. And still on the theme of expectation, I think that the theme for this podcast should have been expectation, the end. (laughs) It is also important to note that your expectation of yourself, meaning, let's say that the way that you have always gotten shape was with, you know, two hours of cardio training for hours on end and eating lettuce and ice cubes. And you have tried that strategy because that's all you know from a previous life. If you have tried that time and time and time and time again, and every single time you fail, you fail not because you suck. You fail because the plan sucks for the stage of life that you have now. If you're constantly going into old strategies, with the expectation that is going to have a different outcome, that's delusion. So we have to manage expectations. And we can manage expectations, especially on something like this, by looking at the data. If you have gone back to your, you know, the plans that the trainer you used when you were 22, now that you are 47, and you have been trying to do that for the past 10 years, and it has failed, I mean, I'm no Einstein, but chances are that that might not be the right strategy for you. So adjustment of expectation as far as what worked for you and what is going to work now and being self-aware enough to acknowledge that perhaps you don't know everything and that's okay. And that's perfectly okay. Listen, do it yourself. Is not my thing. The last time that I tried to fix something in my house, I almost flooded my laundry facility because I thought that YouTube had the answers on how to connect the cables for my washing machine. And I legit nearly had to rip all the hardwood floor on my former dining room that is right next to the laundry facility because I thought that I could figure shit out on my own because how hard can it be? Well, apparently very hard. So don't be embarrassed or defeated to ask for help because, yeah, perhaps you do know what to do. You know what to do for the person that you were, but not for the person that you are right now. And being on the hamster wheel over and over again is not going to fix the problem. You need a new strategy. And then just to to wrap up today, your way to be strategic with your approach to your fitness goals this year is to let go of what didn't work. And I'm going to do another episode all on this because this is something that has been lingering in my brain. I need to talk about it somewhere. So it's going to be here on this podcast, but I'm going to do a cliff note version of it. If you had a bad experience with a coach in the past, listen, I get it. So have I. I've had bad experiences with fitness coaches. I've had bad experiences with business coaches. I too have wasted tons of money on people that advertise themselves as professionals and weren't able to deliver what I was expecting. And I will take some ownership. Maybe my expectations were unclear on what I was going to get. Maybe I didn't ask the right questions. Maybe I didn't do my research as I should, but could have, should have, would have. I cannot change what happened in the past. I cannot change that I hired somebody that didn't deliver what I was expecting. The same way that me, Natalia, as a coach, I cannot change what another coach or what kind of service another coach has provided to you. But if 
since stopping working with said coach, in your case, listening, you have been reluctant to work with anybody else because you think that everybody suck. And then you've been trying to do everything yourself and you have made no progress. Something's going to have to change. And that's a way to become strategic with your approach. Because you can either keep on doing the same thing that you're doing and likely not getting results, or you can get your head out of your ass and realize that there are bad coaches, there are good coaches, and the good coaches cannot pay for what the shady coaches have done. And I even did a short reel on my social media the other day. It's kind of like, if you go to a bad restaurant, you just stop going to that restaurant. You don't stop going to restaurants altogether. If you have a bad car, listen, I've had my fair share of bad cars. I had a Chrysler Sebring that was a 95, I think. I don't even freaking remember. But I spent more money fixing that car than I actually paid for the car. That didn't stop me from buying cars again. I never bought an American car again. No offense. I'm sure they're great. But I bought a car. So why is it that whenever it comes to a coach, it's a dichotomous decision. It's either like, oh, I hired a coach. That coach sucks. I'm never going to hire another one again. All right. Can we not do a little bit of like research and, and learn from the bad experience and move from there? And that's why you, how you're going to get strategic with your, your fitness goals. Because why the hell would you be walking in circles trying to solve a problem on your own when you know that there are people out there that can help you? And I don't even give a shit if it's me. I do not care, but just make sure that you do your due diligence. And I have another podcast episode on how to hire the right coach. Let me tell you here what episode it is so you can check it out. You was the episode before last. Five tips to finding the right fitness coach. I don't care if it's me. It doesn't have to be me. But making sure that you find the right person to get you to where you want to be is going to be the easiest and quickest way for you to get to your goal and to be strategic about it. Why would you be walking around circles when you know that there are people out there that can actually help you? But I find that a lot of people like to be stuck in their own misery, complaining about how everybody else sucks instead of taking ownership of their life choices. Maybe you try to look for a budget solution to a not-so-budget problem like your health and fitness. Yeah, that's probably going to suck, but then you learn the lesson. But that shouldn't mean that you're never going to ask for help again. Like if you go to a hairdresser and a hairdresser fucks up your hair, chances are that you're still going to go to a hairdresser. You're just going to go to a different one. So just something to keep in mind. So a quick recap. Ways to be strategic on your approach to your fitness goals this year. Be clear on your goals. You stop with the fluffy, oh, I want to feel better. Oh, I, I just want to feel good and feel better in my skin. All great, but we need to be objective. Because the only way that we can track progress is by being objective with what the ultimate goal is. Is the goal to lose fat? Cool. How much fat do you want to lose? What dress size do you want to get back down to? You want to put on muscle and look, quote unquote, toned, build more muscle? Cool. Do you have an inspo? And obviously, you're not going to look like that because everybody is different if you're getting an inspo from somebody else. But it is a very good starting point because what is toned and muscular for me might not be for you. So having that kind of clarity, having clarity on, you know, how often you can train, how much time can you dedicate to training? Do you enjoy the activity that you are signing up to do? You didn't catch me that running. We've already established that. Natalia does not run. Do not invite me to go hiking. I am not coming. I hate it. If that's the activity of choice, I am not joining it. The end. Why? Because I don't enjoy it. So find something that you enjoy. For me, love me spinning. I love lifting. So it's more likely for me to stay consistent and get up at ridiculous o'clock to do those activities because I like them. And the next strategy for you to use is to not let other people's toxic body positivity impact you, impact the clarity in which you work towards a specific goal. 
And what I mean by that is like the whole gaslighting of how you feel about your body. Oh, you shouldn't be grateful. You should love yourself. Yes, you should be grateful. You should love yourself. But that shouldn't stop you from working towards a bigger goal if that's what you want, especially if not being where you want to be physically is having a negative impact in your life. It's nobody's job to tell you how to feel. It ain't my job to tell you how to feel. It is my job to tell you that it is okay to feel your feels. Okay? And I see this a lot with uh, new moms. Oh, you should just be grateful that you had a baby. Well, I can be grateful that I had a baby and feel frustrated that I'm not seeing changes in my body or feel frustrated about how much my body has changed and put work into it. I'm not saying like right out of the gate with you just had a baby two days ago and you go. Or, you know, if you are in menopause or perimenopause and you are having some symptoms and maybe you put on a little bit of like, oh, you should just be grateful that you look so great at your age. Well, what if you want to look better? Nothing wrong with that. And next one, make sure that your actions are meeting your expectations, that your willingness and your efforts that you're willing to put into something match the expectations that you have. Because if you have the expectation that you are going to, I don't know, win the Olympia, but your efforts and willingness to train is like, oh, I'm going to train once a week for 15 minutes there is a little bit of a disconnect. Also, managing your expectation as far as the strategies that you have used in the past that were not sustainable and how quick the results came. And whenever you decide to go a strategy that is more a long-term and realistic for the life that you have, the changes are not going to be as drastic right out of the gate as to when you were doing three-day fast. You see what I'm saying? Like you cannot expect to have the same outcome right out of the gate with something that was incredibly aggressive, yo-yoing and like fatty and non-sustainable whenever you're changing to a strategy that is more long-term sustainable. So with all that, I would love for you to go on my Instagram and tell me what are the strategies that you are implementing right now you don't have to start with all of them. You can start with one of them at, at a time, you know, but what are the ones that you're already implementing to get better results and to get long-term results? Let me know on my social media, my Instagram, the link is down below. And make sure that if you're looking for an amazing pre-workout, check out Embody Energy Explosion. It is my favorite pre-workout. So make sure that you check it out. It's also nootropic, so it helps with focus. So if you need a pre-workout that is going to help you stay focused, you know, whenever you train and as you go into your work routine, Energy Explosion is your go-to. There is a link down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thank you so much for listening. Speak soon. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. But let me ask you, what was your aha moment in today's episode? I would love to know. You can leave me a comment or voice message at the link in the show description. You can also follow me on Instagram and let me know what topics you want to hear more about or who I should have on the show. As for today, this is it for today, guys. I'll see you back next week for another episode of the Unfiltered Fit Life Podcast.